Joining us on the set, our international affairs commentator, uh, Douglas Herbert. Hello to you, Doug. Um, within the hour, we're expecting a crisis security meeting chaired by French President Emmanuel Macron. This, of course, a new test for uh, Macron. It is, and you could also forgive perhaps a lot of French watching this who will watch it for rolling their eyes a little bit, not at uh, just Macron. You can't just single him out. But, you know, we've had a succession of French presidents going back uh, literally to uh, Valérie Giscard d'Estaing in the in the 70s and, and even before that, with each of them always announcing what are sort of characterized as groundbreaking plans to revamp uh, the impoverished, hard-pressed suburbs, which pack in a disproportionate share of first and second ge generation uh, French immigrants um, and and where they experience and are up against perpetually, habitually, a, a lack of jobs, a lack of educational prospects and opportunities. And it comes back to bite them time and again. Now, in Macron's case, um, you know, he has called, obviously, for cooler heads to prevail. He has called uh, what happened basically uh, inexcusable. Uh, but at the same time, he has also said that the violence that it has spawned uh, and the unrest across France targeting institutions um, is unjustifiable. So it's a very delicate, a fine balance uh, that Macron has been trying to strike here because he doesn't want to escalate things further. But, you know, Emmanuel Macron has been up against it right throughout his presidency, you could say. He hasn't been cut any slack here. Uh, you know, he had the, the Yellow Vest movement. He had the uh, the pandemic. He had the recently the massive pension uh, reform protests sweeping across France, uh, barely a breather, and now this. Um, and so, you know, he has to do something immediately to try to at least make it look like that he is someone who has an action plan. But let's not forget that in his first year in office, he came into office announcing groundbreaking radical changes for the suburbs. And just to put that in a context, about 6 million uh, French live in about 1,500 neighborhoods in France, which are called, they're categorized as what's called urban policy priority districts. Um, and what does that mean? That means that when the government rolls out these uh, refurbishing the suburbs, revamping uh, the downtrodden, uh, you know, these neighborhoods programs, these are the priority districts that are going to get the money and get the funds. France hasn't been building these high-rise so-called HLM buildings in years where a lot of these immigrants have lived, where the living conditions have been deplorable. Often there's been, you know, open drug trading in the stairwells and, 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 and they've, you know, it's been often dangerous, squalid conditions. Those buildings no longer went up. Many of them have been raised and you've had these sort of more bar type long houses buildings built, which are aesthetically more pleasing, supposed to be more comfortable and, and, and perhaps with a bit more safety uh, features. But still, the reality of the suburbs for the vast majority of those living there remains bleak because even as Macron has acknowledged, many of the people who live there and take Clichy-sous-Bois, which is one of the suburbs which over the night was, uh, was affected by a lot of this unrest, was, was a victim to suffer a lot of this violence, uh, 37 to 40 percent of the, of the population there are immigrant or second, first generation immigrants. And Macron described them as being under house arrest. What does he mean? They're not literally under a house arrest. They can leave their homes, but they may as well be under house arrest because they're not going to Paris. Uh, they are basically trapped with little opportunities in these suburbs. And a lot of them are young kids, adolescents, who also feel viscerally that lack of opportunity, the lack of prospects, who get sucked into having to perhaps do things that they would pr rather not do. Uh, a lot of those who have been involved by the police reports in the, the, the rioting uh, have been 14 to 18-year-olds. And as we heard Mark saying before, a lot of them are exploiting, yes, taking advantage of an opportunity to basically, you know, get something out of this if they can. And, you know, there are some people who would say, well, you can't blame them given what they're living through, given the conditions they're living through. But Macron, like I said, is really up against it. He is the latest in a long succession of French presidents who... They're not ill-intentioned, but they haven't been able to somehow address the most deep-seated issues in these suburbs, which we were saying, the lack of jobs, the lack of education prospects, the deep poverty, the impoverishment, the high unemployment. How do you dig yourself out of that? Um, and those are the issues that they say need even greater commitment and resources and an even greater awareness and opening and, and open debate in society.